So this week we're going to work with figures and I'm just going to do a short um, demonstration video on a couple of approaches that you might like to take to drawing our performers. Um, we're going to have Comanche in the studio on Monday uh, and I'll do that as a Zoom session. So that will be available for people to join in with in the studio or to join in on Zoom or to look at later. And I'm going to suggest different ways of drawing the figure. And I thought as a bit of a contrast to last time, uh, when we were working with lines and outlines and so on, it might be good to take the no lines approach and produce some images of figures, uh, which might be more easily integrated into your settings, into your theatre or other settings. So the first way, of course, would be charcoal rub away. So as well as um, seeing Comacci on Monday, uh, I've attached some photographs to the email of some dancers. So we've got a couple of young ballroom dancers and uh, also Hope being a musician. So let me start with the ballroom dancers. I've covered the page with charcoal, rubbed it in a little bit, and now I'm just sliding the side of my charcoal around across that page to get the dark shapes that make up these two figures. So this is one of those great ways of drawing, which is nice and quick. It's a way of drawing shapes and it will also give you some figures, figures without, figures without borders. Um, sans frontières, as it were. And that might prove both interesting for the drawing process, but also useful for when you want to put them into your setting. So that's a bit of charcoal sliding it around and now it's got old negative shapes. And I'm thinking, you know, particularly my rubber's really filthy. It's not cleaning the page at all. That's amazing. Um, I don't know what's actually on it that doesn't come off. So I'm just thinking with the different settings that you've been working with, it would be very useful to have these figures which aren't too defined or have been selectively defined so that you can incorporate them into whatever your composition is. There will be lines to come and colour and so on, but it's always good to see it at these different stages. That's the very first stage where I've lifted off a bit of light. I think what I would be inclined to do now, I'll see if I can get a little bit of light off uh, of the figures themselves. There's an arm here and a white shirt collar, maybe a little bit of light on his face. None of this has to be too precise because this is a, a beginning that's going to be refined through, well, either more tone or colour. That's more or less it. I would have got a little bit more onto her dress. So that's also, you know, fine to go back and forth in this way. Put the charcoal on, take it off and so on. Okay, so I'll pause while I spray that. So I've sprayed it and actually it really looks like a monoprint. Does it not? And I'm now going to start with a negative sheep. Not least because my rubber was so ineffective. Uh, so I'll work around these figures and I suppose for this particular subject it's quite nice the kind of rapport between these two performers so the spaces between them not only might model them in three dimensions but or help them stand out at least um, <clears throat> but it'll also say something about the way that they Uh, engage with each other. So can do more of that. 
But that's, that's demonstrated that pretty well. And I'm going to try with these demonstrations to really do less. Because I think it would be useful to everyone to have sketches of figures which are entirely credible and interesting, but maybe not too definite. It will depend partly what you want to do with them, um, do with them ultimately, but I think that might be interesting. So just getting a bit of colour on and letting these edges be lost in places and only found when I think there's something really important. So I've, I've actually just put in one colour for everything. Uh, partly because I'm allowing the light and shade of the charcoal rub away stage to explain things. But I will put a little bit of light on everything now. Um, to the grey, there's grey jacket. So, a little bit more light on her. A brighter red. And some light on them all, on them both. So again, my aim is to do less then I want to sort of stand back a lot, pause the process quite a few times so that I don't miss what's going on. But there we are. I think that's all I want from that approach. Another approach I'm going to suggest you try is drawing with a pencil. I've got a charcoal pencil here. You might try a pastel pencil, a, a stick of Conte or, or, or an ordinary pencil, but it would be to draw um, with hatched marks. So to build up a pattern of tone by using a diagonal hatched mark. Now I've got one of these pictures of Hope playing her guitar, so it's quite tricky to do this because I'm trying to get around the whole pose and it's easier to do this sort of thing when you get to something dark so she's got dark trousers and dark boots so seeing tone in those situations is easier than up here where she's got a white blouse um, but I've done less in those areas. I have done a little bit uh, just in order to get something established. But it's a good technique to learn to do. Uh, you can see why I'm sure because I'm just drawing shapes and because I've got this kind of rapid hatching machine, those shapes don't, don't have clear edges. And you see, of course, it doesn't really matter that they don't have clear edges. I'm looking for the dark shapes. So there are parts of the guitar as well as her trousers. Um, and the neck of the guitar and everything. She's got a hand in there, so I might have lost something there. I can always add more if necessary, and I suppose actually she's got a white white blouse here, so I could also put in a dark shape next to that if I want to define both her face and her white blouse. So again, I'm trying to give you something that you can used to extract the information in, in the case of what I'm doing from a photograph, but we'll also do it when we have Comanche modeling in, modeling in the studio. 
because it's trying to find ways of simplifying, getting what's essential, giving you figures that you can use in some sort of composition, but figures that aren't necessarily too definite. So that's the other approach. Um, this, as with um, the first approach I took with the dancers and the rubberway charcoal followed by pastel, could be supplemented at any point with some lines or a bit of rubbing, rubbing out or some definition. And I think that would be good to do here now because there are elements of this subject, you know, like the, the body of the guitar. Um, like maybe the edge of Hope's face, that I could just start to define a little bit. Maybe her shirt. But if you know, if I'm aware that that what I'm trying to achieve here is something without too much definition, then I want to be very sparing in how I introduce these lines. And again, it might be that if you're looking for something in your figures which can be integrated into your compositions, then a few selected incisive lines might be quite useful. And especially, I think, you know, I might just get a bit off there just to show it's possible where this hand these fingers are describing a chord. That's something I might want to choose to define on the head of the guitar. But I'm trying to do it in such a way that it's a minimal disruption of that non-line approach. Okay, well, there's a couple of things that you could try there. I've attached the photographs to the email and uh, I'll record Komachi's session on Monday, which is a couple of hours, 10 till 12. And you could work from them as well. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.